Welcome to a lesson on matching and bipartite graphs. Recall that a graph is bipartite if the vertices can be divided into two sets, A and B, with no two vertices in A adjacent and no two vertices in B adjacent. The vertices in A can be adjacent to some or all of the vertices in B. Every edge connects a vertex in A and B. To get a feel for what a matching is in a bipartite graph, let's say you are in a class that requires a research topic and every student must have a different topic. Students are required to submit up to three possible topics. The instructor then needs to figure out if it is possible for each student to have a different topic. If it is possible, then there is a matching for the students. If it is not possible, there is no matching for the students. Here's an abbreviated graph to illustrate the idea. We have the students on the left and the topics on the right. Student A submits topic one. Student B submits topics one and two. Student C submits topics three and four and student D submits topics one, four, and five. Again, if the instructor is able to assign each student a different topic, then there is a matching for the students. If the instructor is not able to assign each student a different topic, then there is no matching for the students. Analyzing the graph, notice how there is a matching. One possible matching is for the instructor to assign student A to topic one, student B to topic two, student C to topic four, and student D to topic five. This is just one possible matching, but there is a matching for the students. Let's look at another example. Here, student A submits topics one and four, student B submits topics one and two, student C submits topics one, two, three, and five. Notice how the student didn't follow the directions. The student submitted four topics, not up to three. And then student D also didn't follow through. Student D did not submit any topics at all. Well, in this case, because student D did not submit any topics at all, the instructor is not able to assign each student a different topic, and therefore, there is no matching for the students. Let's look at one more example. Here, student A submitted topic one, student B submitted topics one and two, student C also submitted topics one and two, and student D submitted topics three, four, and five. There's also a problem in this graph. If we focus on students A, B, and C, notice combined, students A, B, and C only submitted topics one and two. There's no way the instructor can assign each student a different topic because there's only two topics to assign three students, and therefore, there is no matching for the students. And now let's talk about this more formally. Given a bipartite graph G with A and B as its two groups of vertices, let S be a subset of A. N of S is the set of all of the neighbors of the vertices in S. That is, N of S contains all the vertices which are adjacent to at least one of the vertices in S. As an example, if we let S be the set of vertices A and B, notice A is adjacent to E and B is adjacent to F and G. This indicates if S is a set of vertices A and B, then N of S is a set of vertices E, F, and G. E, F, and G are adjacent to at least one of the vertices in S. As a second example, let's let S be the set of vertices B and D. Notice B is adjacent to F and G. D is adjacent to G, H, and I. This indicates if S is the set of variables B and C, then N of S, the set of neighbors of S, is a set of vertices F, G, H, and I. Given a bipartite graph G with A and B as its two groups of vertices, a matching of the group A is a subset of edges of G such that each edge connects all vertices of A with exactly one vertex of A to one vertex of B. So notice how a matching is a subset of edges of G if a matching exists. As an example, looking at the graph below, if we can find a set of edges that connects all vertices of A with exactly one vertex of A to one vertex of B, we have a matching. And notice how the graph does have a matching. We can use this edge to connect A and E. We can use this edge to connect B and F. We can use this edge to connect C and G. And we can use this edge to connect D and I. These edges connect all the vertices of A with exactly one vertex of A to one vertex of B. This is a matching of the group A 
which again is a subset of edges of G, which are the edges E1, E2, E3, and E4, or we can say the edges AE, BF, CG, and DI. And now let's talk about Hall's marriage theorem, which will help us determine whether a graph has a matching of A or does not have a matching of A. Hall's marriage theorem states, if G is a bipartite graph with sets A and B, then G has a matching of A if and only if the cardinality of N of S, meaning the number of vertices in the set of neighbors of S, is greater than or equal to the cardinality of S, meaning the number of vertices in the set S, where set S is a subset of the set A. Looking at the graph here on the right, the bipartite graph has a matching of A if and only if, again, the number of elements or number of vertices in the neighbors of S here in set B is greater than or equal to the number of vertices in set S, where set S is a subset of set A. Let's look at a couple of examples of this theorem. Analyzing the graph here on the left, we should be able to recognize this graph does not have a matching of A because vertex C does not have any adjacent vertices in set B. So if we focus on vertex C and let set S be the set containing the vertex C, C does not have any adjacent vertices, and therefore the set of neighbors of S or N of S is equal to the empty set. Well, if S is equal to the set with the vertex C, the cardinality of S is one, and since N of S is equal to the empty set, the cardinality of N of S is equal to zero. Notice in this case, the cardinality of N of S is not greater than or equal to the cardinality of S, indicating the graph does not have a matching of A. As a second example, if we let S contain the vertices A and C, A is adjacent to vertex E, C is not adjacent to any vertices in set B, so if S is equal to the set of vertices A and C, then N of S is equal to the set with the vertex E. The cardinality of S is two, the cardinality of N of S is one. One is not greater than or equal to two, which is why we don't have a matching of A. Let's look at one more graph. Analyzing this graph, let's let S be the set of vertices A, B, and C. Notice A is adjacent to vertex E, B is adjacent to E and F, and C is adjacent to E. In this case, if we let S equal the set of vertices A, B, and C, the neighborhood of S, or N of S, is equal to the set of vertices E and F. The cardinality of S is three. The cardinality of N of S is two. Once again, notice two is not greater than or equal to three, which by Hall's marriage theorem states, the graph does not have a matching of A. I hope you found this helpful.